Okay, and welcome to this tutorial on how to create your first e-sheet. So, the first thing we're going to get to is, obviously, if we cl click on Create New E-Sheet, it'll bring us to this. It goes in and it looks for any kind of uh, document or PDF inside your Google Drive that uh, has been edited or touched or opened within the last year. And it gets the top 50 the most recent 50 and it ranks them by how recent so the ones that you edited and touched just you know the last time would be on top and um, so obviously when you're on this you can double click you can click and select you can switch from grid to list view and search you can double click these you can click here click select and or you can choose a file and upload a PDF only um, from your actual computer. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to um, open up this little sample worksheet I have. So double click it. And so it takes a little bit sometimes because it's actually doing a lot of converting process on the server. So the first thing it comes to is it's just a simple little instructional thing where it um, just kind of flips through and gets you started. And, you know, the first time through, walk through this and it'll, it'll try to walk you through and I'll, I'll kind of talk more about it. So go ahead and click get started. And we can just click next and go through everything. But I'm going to go ahead and click got it and I'm going to walk you through it myself. So, <clears throat> obviously, the first time you're using this, this is something you're going to use, spend a lot of your time in inside Duck Soup, and this is where you actually go in and make your answer key for your e-sheet. Over here is the menu that you navigate through, and here's the actual e-sheet that was imported. Uh, I can click Settings and go to the Settings. I could actually click here and add an answer block. I could zoom in and out if I need to. And um, the, on this first e-sheet, there's no, actually on this there's no um, on this worksheet there's no questions on the first page so if there's multiple pages you'll notice right here I click this and it goes to the next page if I want to go back right there so name and period we don't need the name and the period because students automatically we collect their names inside duck soup so there's no reason to worry about identifying your students you'll be able to be able to identify them later so the first thing we do is we click and drag to draw our answer block so we click and drag we can actually double click inside to make that stick we can click create or we can actually hit the enter button so if we hit enter click here double click it actually sticks so I'm gonna go ahead and click create and so now once I'm in there if I click inside I'm always gonna try for the most part I'm gonna put my answer inside here that's where I actually put the answer to the answer key now you'll notice that whenever I clicked inside of this this little thing popped up that's where so if I click this that goes away if I click there it goes back or if I click inside here you'll notice it comes back now whenever I draw more than one box I'm gonna go ahead and draw a couple boxes here I'm gonna hit the enter key on that one I'm going to double click inside on that one now you'll notice whenever I click over here that they actually change and then if I click over here you'll notice that it changes over here I can actually resize by clicking on this little button here and I can change the position of this if I wanted to right so I can actually change and anytime that the, I'm doing this and sometimes you know I mean technology is not absolutely 100% perfect so anytime I'm doing this and I want to like um, let's say it sticks or something like that if I just go up and hit the refresh button it'll bring me right back to where I was and everything's fine if I want to delete something I just click the little delete box and click yes and it'll actually delete that for me. Now up here there's actually two tabs. So whenever I want to actually look at all the different choices I have for an answer box, I can click on this second tab right here and it actually it chooses the number. Now <clears throat> you'll notice it doesn't really know what number you have. So it actually numbers these in the order that you drew them. So so if you draw one down here and then draw one up here, it'll put this as number one and this up here is number two. So the number question you can actually go through and change if you want. The points. Um, don't really worry about how many points things are because it automatically will calculate the percent correct. So as you just leave them one point, that's fine. 
And if uh, you want something to cut count twice as much as the other things, then just, you know, bump it up to two. If you want something that does, you don't want it to count at all, just bump the points down to zero. Now, right here where it says correct answer, what happens is if I type here and I actually put my correct answer, it actually puts it right here. It's just showing what the answer is. This is the answer. <clears throat> and so that it puts it right there. The help text. Help text is actually what your students will see. They'll see a little question mark that will come up. If they click on it, they'll see this. Everything else will be gone. They'll see the help text. And the help link, if they click on it, they can actually like put a link to a video or something like that. It'll actually open up a new tab and send them to the video. Then they can come back and answer your question. So let's talk about the different answer types real quick. So first of all, the answer type for text is just text. It's going to match it exactly. Now, actually, it's it's actually not case sensitive, but as far as spelling, when your students are doing this, if they misspell a word, it there's no other way around it. It's going to count it wrong. And so, if I put in you know multiple words, this is an answer. Then it will actually look for these multiple words exactly written just like this to count it correct or incorrect. Now, if I want multiple words and they can be in different order, then I might select in the different answer types, I might go down here to paragraph response. Now you'll notice in paragraph response there is no place for me to type in this. When there's no place for me to type inside this blank to put an answer, then that means there's actually something going on over here. And so whenever there's a paragraph response, so I'm going to go ahead and click that back to text. I'm going to draw a bigger one because I'm going to make it to where it's actually like a paragraph. So if I click right here, paragraph response, then you'll notice that it says place keywords in search in order to help with grading later. So I can actually put in four different keywords and it'll give them partial credit based on the number of keywords that I put in there. So if I put in two keywords, then they're half e they're, they're worth uh, half a credit each. If I put in four, then it's 25% each partial credit. And so it'll look for those keywords and match them. And so um, that's kind of how that works. Let's look at the next thing. So number, I can actually put in a, an actual number if I want to force them to answer a number. Um, multiple choice. You'll notice over here, when I do multiple choice, that there's no place to put in answers. So that means they're over here. So I can actually, you know, put in here. For my multiple choice, and I need to select one of them to be correct. Or I can come over here and select this one to be correct, and you'll notice that it'll change over here. So I need to select the correct answer. The next one. <clears throat> so I have a couple of different things here. I have math and chemistry. And so in a math and chemistry response, so let's say I do this one right here. Um, if I select math and chemistry, then I'll actually make this little tiny box here. If I click editor, you'll notice that I actually have a math equation editor. So I can uh, you know, do the cube root of 27. And click update. And it'll actually put it right here. And it'll grade it just like that. Now, you'll notice that the size of the lettering is different. The size of the font inside the answer blanks is based on the size of the box. So if I draw a really big box, right, and I click inside of it and I type, you'll notice that it's there's a lot, it's, it's a really big font there. And so if I type in, if I draw a little small box and I type in there, you'll notice that it has a small font. So if you're trying to cr control the font size, then just control the, the size that you draw the box. The box doesn't have to be exactly the size of the blank. So if I want a larger font, larger box, smaller font, smaller box. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete these. I'll click here. Delete. Yes. Click on that one. Delete. Yes. Okay. The next one. Let's look at drawing responses. And so if I click here. If I want to do a show your work box, so I want my students to actually show their work, then what I would do is I would draw a box over the entire problem I want them to show their work on. Because later on, 
when they actually click on this, what will happen is, is it will go blow up that entire problem full screen. So I still want them to be able to uh, read the problem when it goes to full screen. So anytime I'm doing any kind of show your work, I want them to write on the paper. I want to draw over the actual problem too. So I click on that, click on that tab. I change this to a show your work box. Now show your work box makes that whole area I drew the box around. It makes that active. They're going to be able to write on it. Now show your work boxes is basically you have a text response that will be automatically graded. It won't grade the written show your work, but at least you can go back and look at it if this is incorrect. So like if I wanted the answer to be 10, then <clears throat> then that will be uh, right there. Okay. So there's also a choice if I want to, instead of a show your work, I can actually do a show your work math and chemistry. So again, it works the exact same way, show your work math and chemistry. And then I can also, let's say I want them to draw on this part. Um, well, a good example in this paper would actually be right here. Let's say I want my students to be able to draw on this. Maybe I want them to be able to mark out the ones that they've already used, you know, or maybe there's an answer key or something like that. So if I want my students to draw on this, but there's not really a correct answer, I would just use a drawing box and I would change the points to zero. So drawing box change points to zero. That means the students can now draw on this area and they won't have to worry about uh, it grading. You won't have to worry about it grading correct or incorrect. All drawing boxes are automatically correct. So if you leave the points as one, they will actually get credit. If you leave the points as zero, then it grades it correct, but there's no credit. So it doesn't really change their score or anything like that. So those are all the different types of answer blanks. And I will, in the next video, I'll talk about how to assign this to students. So when I'm done, all I have to do is go back to settings and you'll see the answers that I selected for each one of these. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at support at ducksoup.us. Thank you.